This lovely silhouette of a car is a limited production run halo car made by Volkswagen called the XL1. What makes it a halo car isn't that it has ultra performance or maximum speed. What makes it a halo car is that it's ultra efficient. It's a diesel plug-in hybrid that meets or exceeds 260 miles per gallon. This is a 2014 VW XL1. It has a 47 horsepower two-cylinder turbo diesel engine and a 27 horsepower electric motor combining to make the total output 74 horsepower. For power transfer, it has a seven-speed dual-clutch automatic and for storage of the Zippy Zappy, it has a 5.5 kilowatt hour lithium-ion battery pack. This sleek example of a car has a drag coefficient of just 0.189. For comparison's sake, a Tesla Model 3 has a drag coefficient of 0.23. Also, despite having an electric drivetrain, a diesel engine, and a dual-clutch gearbox, this car just weighs 1,750 pounds. So basically nothing. Everything you see on this car is for ultra efficiency. It's either there to make it as lightweight as possible or to make it as aerodynamic as possible. The whole car is made from carbon fiber. There's less paint on the outside to save a little bit of weight. The brakes are ceramic for lightness. There's no real mirrors on the car because that would cause a little bit of aerodynamic drag. So you have these cameras on the outside with screens on the inside. These windows, they're polycarbonate, not glass. The front windshield only has one windshield wiper because that's all you need. The front tires on this car are just 11 and a half centimeters wide for the lowest rolling resistance possible. By comparison, the rear tires are positively fat at 14 and a half centimeters wide. The goal when Volkswagen was developing this car was to go 100 kilometers on just one liter of diesel. And if that wasn't enough, the second goal was to sell these to the public. So they had to make it street legal and comply with all the regulations. They sold 200 of these to the public. They made about 250, but they sold 200 that people could just buy. They sold when they were new for $146,000 or thereabouts. I don't even know where to start with this thing. First of all, just look at it. It's beautiful from every angle. It certainly looks like a halo car. It looks like a concept car that just rolled off of the auto show floor and out onto the streets. Even if you don't think it's beautiful, it certainly is eye-catching. You can't argue with that. I've got a little bit of analysis paralysis here, so I'm just gonna take you on a tour of this car, real casual-like. Here's the front of the car. It is the front of the car. And that's not a frunk or anything, it's just a body panel that doesn't open up. It does have a trunk, although it's not exceptionally big given the aerodynamic shape of the car, but more importantly, it's right next to the 800cc diesel engine and there's not a lot of insulation in this firewall here to keep the heat out of the trunk. So if you put a box of chocolates back here, it'll turn into chocolate soup. Also, while we're back here, can we take a minute to admire the XL1 printing and the carbon fiber firewall? It's just beautiful, I just, I love it. The doors, as you've certainly noticed by now because you're not blind, are of the ostrich wing variety. And they're very pleasant to use and they're almost certainly here because of this massive carbon fiber tub structure that's in the way. On the doors, and I love this dichotomy here, we have the rear view camera screens and window winders because it doesn't have power windows. How fantastic is that? Inside the car, it feels quite cozy and quite premium, but that's probably more to do with the vast amounts of carbon fiber surrounding me than anything else. These seats are pretty thin, but quite comfortable. They fit my shape quite well. Also, that passenger seat is fixed in place. You can't move it. And this one only has a manual forward and aft. Oh, it does tilt. <laughs> I'm finding out new things. Anyway, this, uh, this one does manually move forward and backward, and apparently it tilts, but it's just one solid piece, again, to save weight. Also, the steering wheel does not tilt, but it does telescope. Just behind this driver's seat are two tiny grocery bag hooks because that's about all you can fit back there. You can't fit much of anything behind the passenger seat as it's against the firewall. As far as controls, I have the light switch here, the two column stocks, this adorably squarish steering wheel, the gauge cluster in front of me, which just has the tachometer, speedometer, fuel gauge, and a little digital gauge in the middle. The seemingly tacked on Garmin infotainment screen that actually moves a little bit. The climate controls, some various buttons down here. And in the center console, we have the shifter, a tiny storage cubby, a slot to put your key, electronic parking brake, the hazard light switch, and there is no glove box. You just have a little net to put your belongings in. Lastly, on the interior front, I mentioned that this passenger seat is fixed in place, but I didn't mention that it's slightly offset from the driver's seat, just for that little bit of extra space savings. 
the door handles further back, the footwell is further back, etc. One of the prototypes for this car had tandem seating, and this is certainly a step up from that, but it still allows the car to be quite narrow for aerodynamic purposes. All right, let's drive the XL1. Close the massive ostrich wing door and start the tiny tractor sounding diesel engine. Air conditioner's going. There's the little engine. And we are off. They said they have a problem with the charger in this car, so it, its electric only range is very diminished by that. By the way, the electric only range on this car is about 31 miles, I believe, if you plug it in. But since they're not allowed to plug it in, it has to rely off the electricity produced from regen braking and the little generator diesel engine back there. Anyway, let's take it for a spin. Battery charge level, 4.5%. <laughs> Clattery little diesel engine. To save weight, there is almost no sound insulation in this car. They claim there is no sound insulation at all, but I had a look around. There is some sound insulation. It's very cozy in here, but it's actually quite comfortable. Very difficult to get in and out of, but very comfortable once you're in here. And let's go and avoid all the potholes because these bicycle tires could not take much. Uh, it's electric power. Let's just gun it. It's got to be said, that's not exactly slow. I hate to compare it to the Mia that I drove, but um, it's faster than that. I mean, the Mia did break down, but this feels adequate. It's not as loud as I was expecting it to be in here. It's certainly not quiet, but <laughs> the diesel engine, it sounds hilarious. I kind of love it. By kind of, I mean I really love it. This is a massive, well-funded science project that I'm able to drive, and it just happens to look like a spaceship. I would be thrilled if I was one of the people that could, afford, could have afforded this car when it was new, and I assume that's why they sold all of the ones that they intended to sell. This is a concept car you were able to buy. How cool is that? My God, you can just feel the aerodynamics and the lack of ro rolling resistance. It feels like there's nothing slowing it down when you let off the gas. And there's no wind noise either. This would have been a dream project if you were working on, on this thing. This is superb. I want to drive this everywhere. Maybe not for mm, getting groceries or anything like that. Maybe on long distance trips, because long distance trips minimize the amount of times you have to get in and out of it. And that's the real struggle. Oh yeah, lots of dragging noise when you actually dig into the brake disc because they're ceramics for light weight. Can you hear those brake discs? <laughs> they're so noisy. Again, I'm astonished with how refined it feels given that that was not at all a priority on this car. And it doesn't ride horribly either. All right, let's go in front of a semi. Yeah, it's got plenty of get up and go. Yeah, it doesn't feel slow. I mean, the speedometer's in kilometers an hour, so uh, maybe that's inflating my sense of how fast it is. But it doesn't feel slow. Also, I'm right next to the ground, so maybe that's also in sensing, inflating my sense of how fast it is. I like it, regardless. So why did Volkswagen make this car? Who would pay a premium to get better fuel mileage in a car that's not very refined, even if it does look like a spaceship? Well, Volkswagen made this car to develop their diesel-electric hybrid powertrains. It was a development car and a halo car for Volkswagen to say, look what we can do. And it was more than just a concept car that was worked on for a few years and then crushed and eventually turned into a Taurus or a Jetta or something. It was a real production car that they sold to the public. They sold it in limited numbers, and it was very expensive, but they did sell it to the public, meaning they had to go to all the added trouble of making this thing meet regulations, and they still got 260 miles per gallon on a street-legal homologated car. Developing a car is already stupidly expensive. If you go ahead and make that car saleable to the public, then you have the added benefit of recouping just a little bit of that development cost, and you have this group of people that are doing real-world testing for you. And can you imagine being an engineer at Volkswagen and being approached with, oh, Hans, we have a project for you. That would make that engineer's life. This is a dream project for any engineer, and it would be going to somewhere useful. 
a real person would be buying a real car. You wouldn't just be working on a concept whose ideas would be put into a production car. It is a production car. The real unfortunate thing about the XL1 is that the diesel electric powertrain they developed with this car never really went anywhere because Dieselgate happened and nobody wanted Volkswagen diesels after that. Oh well. At least we got this out of the deal. A cool spaceship looking car that sounds like a tiny adorable tractor. So that's your overview of the Volkswagen XL1. Thanks for watching and thanks to the Lane Motor Museum for lending me this car for the day and this space. This is my new favorite place. If you're ever in Nashville, Tennessee, come give them a visit.